revolutionary movements and motivates people in order to change the world that they live in. And he had a great quote that I think works incredibly well, considering the fact that the Exodus story has transformed countries from here to everywhere. I mean, Latin America to Southeast Asia to it doesn't matter where. So, someone want to explain this to me? Someone want to explain the, the, at least the first line? Let's start it that way. Who wants to read it? Go for it. Wherever you are, it's probably Egypt. Give me a minute on that. What does that mean? Um, meaning that Egypt is kind of like the starting point. We're all, not to connect into the same, we're all trying to you know, strive towards something better. So Egypt is kind of like our uh, place to start from. The world isn't perfect, and it never will be perfect. And wherever we are, it's probably imperfect, right? So what's the second line? Who wants to, to read and give a midrash? Come here. There is a better place, a promised land. So there's always somewhere better than where you are. She can dream about. There's some. There is something. It's 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 possible, right? But also, what is promised land? Not only land? possible, what is yeah, it's promised. Right, but, and what You're is promised land? To get yeah. it. In a certain way, like we deserve it, right? Like there's something better. We don't need to live this way. We deserve something better, right? And what's the last one, Adam? You wanna give us a midrash on the last one? The only way to this promised land is through the wilderness. So there is no way to get there except by joining together and marching. Yeah. It takes a village. But you can't do it on your own. Right? There, there's no way to do it on your own. And there's a wilderness out there. And it's gonna be damn hard. And uh, as all of us probably know, I mean, I'm assuming that, that many of you, according to statistics, have done the Seder every year. And from your intake, you guys are probably know a bit about Jewish history and, and, and our traditions and our, our texts. Did the people of Israel and their mixed multitudes uh, go quietly from Egypt to the Promised Land? <laughs> no. No, what happened along the way? You were that one tell? Well, I was thinking even earlier, like they didn't, I'm, I'm, I was thinking that they didn't go right away. They didn't, they, didn't they didn't want to go. They didn't want to go. They didn't want to go. They were like, what, what? Are you crazy? We have food. We have garlics. We have leeks. Someone takes care of us. They give us a place to stay. Screw it. It's hard, but this is life. Get over it. And how many of you have talked to people about adventure and they're like, yeah, it's a great idea, but it's just everything's, you're, you're, you're blowing things out of proportion a little bit. All right? Money. Hey. Right? Are you, are you crazy? Are you crazy? You got to go there? No, it's fine here. Just, just you'll grow up. You'll understand, right? It, that, that's the way that people think because you know what? It's goddamn hard to change your situation. It's hard to get people motivated to change something that they've gotten used to, right? And that, that's the, that's the key that he's saying here. It's saying that you gotta march people through the wilderness. You gotta figure out a way to get them going in one direction, and you have to realize that it's hard. And so, if you don't join together with other people to march. You're never going to get there. And that's what we're going to be. We're going to be using this frame in order to help you think about your Egypt, <coughs> your promised land, and what's going to motivate people to march.